Welcome back to Game Devs Play Games, where you can watch games and practice game design. We are here with Solus. The Solus Project. The Solus Project. <laughs> this this is a game made by uh, Tidal Studios. Tidal. Tidal. Tidal Studios. The Swedish Translates Dev Studio. Translates to God in some sort of Nahatl language. As techie and all so that. So Eddie claims, based That's, on his one-minute Google search. Uh, the Wikipedia page, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the Solus Project was very kindly sent to us by the devs. Um, so we're going to check it out. It's basically a survival... You start a new game. No, this, yeah, I'm going to start a new game. This is a survival exploration game. Uh, it has some horror-esque components, and that's kind of why we're playing it on, in October. But uh, I don't really think we'll include it as our horror series. Because it's not, it's not predominantly spooky. There are just spooky parts to it. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah, it's cool. I, I played a little bit of it just to kind of get a feel for it. Um, and you and I played Conan Exiles on the show, so we played a more pure, like, survival exploration yeah. game. Yeah. This one is is a bit different. Um, mm. In in not necessarily bad way either. It's just, I'm curious to see how you feel about it. In the year 2115, scientists identified a rogue Class B star traveling toward us. Earth and the solar system would be destroyed. The Prolis ships were launched in 2149, three giant colony ships which carried thousands to a safe zone near Pluto. In 2151, the Earth was destroyed. With nowhere to go, our last resources were scrambled and five scout ships were sent to distant worlds. These pioneers are something, something, something our last chance at survival is known as the Solus Project. The Solus Project. So essentially, we are one of those three colony ships, mm -hmm. and you'll you'll see what happens. We crash land fifteen, 15 years, years later. later. <laughs> Mission TSP three arrives at Gleese. Gleese six one four three C. Very scientific classification. I wonder if that it's actually. A real star. Well, yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Is I wonder if. Um, this is a real star that they kind of looked up and they were like, yeah, we're going to find like a real world reference, a real life reference. I think Elise has a few planets that could be Earth-like. I, I remember it. there was a whole big like freak out uh, a couple of years ago when some, some astronomers were like, these might be able to support life. We don't know. And people were like, alien planets that can support life. Aliens. <laughs> oh, oh, no. So Al aliens? If you, if you didn't see, <laughs> something hit us. Yeah. I mean, that's obvious now. Yeah. But I, I can't oh. remember if it was like an asteroid. Oh, or... my. Yeah. Things didn't work out so well. <laughs> oh, no. I Perhaps spreading out the... Um... Storage of fuel across the entire ship wasn't the best idea. Kind of, kind of looked like what happened, you know. Well, if anything, it could have been an oxygen explosion. <laughs> oh, fair enough. I, that's my assumption. I mean, that's not how explosions work in space. Like, well, yeah. maybe you I, would see at least a little bit of the fire before it immediately disappears. But the pot. Oh, <laughs> there's some VO. I oh, think. Lata, departure from Solus Three successful. Lata, can you Yuri, can you hear me? Wait, well, I'm... There, there's there's VO, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> I asked myself why am I doing this? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I'm just gonna shut up and drink. Mm. I like that altitude count on the side. Kind of gives you an indication of yeah. how close you are to the ground. That's pretty great. Especially because like. We as players, we can't really see much out of that window. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, that's the plot. We're one of those ships. It blew up. Now we get to find out how we're going to survive. Bring it on. A new world. So now the question is, we've never seen this planet before. Is there dangers? Is there other life? That we need to fear. Is there even longer loading screens? <laughs> they are pretty long loading screens. <laughs> which, to be fair, they're loading a lot of environment no, stuff. No, it's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think the long loading is justified once you actually see the game world. 
it's it's difficult to optimize that amount of space that they have populated mm-hmm. with and with like survival exploration like you could load things in modularly um but i don't know i, I don't know how well that works on consoles like the ps4 is powerful but it's mm-hmm. not the most crazy thing ever Oh my. More pods? Uh, More I think pods? That's really just like pieces of the ship. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. The The unfortunate thing is that most of the parts that would rain down to the surface would probably burn up in atmosphere. Oh, we broke our mask right away. <laughs> Damn Immediately. It. Damn it. <laughs> like, well, let's hope this is oxygen. <laughs> hmm. The year 2151, and we use blackberries. <laughs> I kind of had that same thought when I saw it, too. I was like, this seems like an old phone. World Independent Local Survival over- Overseer also, Node. Also, this thing could probably be, like, insanely powerful, though. This phone. Despite looking like a blackberry, it could just be, like, ridiculously powerful. Well, it's monitor. It's like a health monitor, and also, I think that's what manages your objectives. So this yeah. is how you're a... monitoring the environment. It tells you yeah, no, how much a... time you have until you should sleep, or how much sleep you have, like... Oh. Rock. rock. <laughs> this is... this is. I like this object. Pick up. Pick up rock. You got it. You did it, buddy. All right. All right, back to the caveman er- days. <laughs> <coughs> okay? Sorry, I, there was. Mm. <laughs> oh goodness, uh, let's see here. Oh, so like wait. most solid uh, oh. uh, survival games, they start you off just like picking up things in your immediate surrounding, being like, "How do you use these things?" So this is this is effectively a tutorial, right? It's a cargo net that says it can be cut and requires a tool. Oh, thank you. Thanks for being for those who read. don't read. <laughs> hi, hi everyone. <laughs> um, I found this tutorial a little bit odd, though, in the sense of like they block you in this zone. It's a very um, tight zone. It's it's a very very tight zone, which for a tutorial makes sense, right? Like they don't want you to wander too far, um, and then just kind of get lost and and die, right? Yeah, am I just bad at finding the fucking sharp object? So you that's the trick. You have to make it. You have a rock. Now you have two rocks. What can you use your rocks for to make a sharp tool? So R2 to craft. A, now you have a sharp rock. That's that's it. So like they I, I like I appreciate that they don't force like heavy hand tutorial you by being like, you have to create a sharp tool by doing this and this. They kind of leave it up for the player to discover. Yeah. Um I think the, my point of, of contradiction in this tutorial, though, is that they block you off in this tiny zone. Gotcha. So you can't leave until you figure it out. Mm-hmm. But they don't do much to, like, help you figure it out. So it, it seems a little, I don't know, heavy tutorial-ish. Yeah. I, I think it would have been fine if they just let you run around and just kind of naturally figure that out and yeah there might have been some kind of uh diet or like text log in there that's fire i know that's i had to find out if it killed me i think it actually does hurt you ah i might i mean you have the, the, the like perimeter but yeah i think you auto heal not actually sure how health works hmm. oh no yeah because you have a health meter there i don't actually know Where if it's it? ticked down it's the top one on your blackberry yeah no. yeah okay all right which maybe maximum is a thousand? I'm not actually sure. Mm. Oh, hello. Well, these controls are weird. Eh, it could be worse. So you you just opened that can. Ooh, with my sharp rock. Yeah. Well, it's that's how they do the crafting. Sweet. Now you pull, and I will never know what that was because you picked it up before you scanned it. Yeah, the controls are a little weird at first. Once you get used to it, I Here think it I, I felt like it was pretty straightforward. Oh, I think it's a bottle of water you just picked up. Yeah. Water bottle. So you have to maintain calories. You have to monitor water. You have to make sure that you get enough sleep. Um, mm. Oh, yeah, and you have to 
your body temperature is basically indicative of whether or not you're going to get sick. Yeah. And if you get sick, then you get the status ailment and your health slowly ticks down over time until you rest and heal and, and all that jazz. Gotcha. Um, so I feel like the survival mechanics are pretty straightforward. Yeah. It's akin to uh, most... Oh. oh. Oopsies. Oh, so bad at this. I saw... Oh, it's just reading on here. Okay. Surat reading a office script Eman gave her. Apparently the next pioneers from all the solar ships. When Isabella and Hatim had their episode, they weren't given any script, but Monty is a bit unpredictable. So that's, what, two out of 23? So you'll find a bunch of these little, um, like, notes scattered across the environment. Mm -hmm. Um, And they don't provide a ton of value in terms of gameplay. Right. But they give you a lot of context and they kind of unfold the narrative. I do find it interesting though that it's paper. They even make a point at one point to call out that it's like uh, m- resilient paper. Like the ink won't smudge or it's waterproof paper. Gotcha. Wait, which is, okay. is interesting. Gotcha. I think it a, like a microchip might have made more sense because you could just put it in your phone. But, you know. <laughs> That's fair. Um, yeah, I don't know what your objective is. I think you just are supposed to explore at this point. Gotcha. I mean, obviously, like, this is sort of a more sandbox zone to let uh, you kind of figure out there. how you're going to survive. I want to get there. And, like, the whole point of this segment is to teach the player that they have to monitor their calories and water and stuff. Gotcha. And it gives you enough time to kind of poke around and, and learn the controls too, which shouldn't, I think is good. Shouldn't there be really big waves right now? Why? With that big ass planet there. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know how that works. It's, it's something like that. But who knows? Maybe it's those planets are so small in comparison to your the planet you're on now that it doesn't matter. Maybe it doesn't matter. I don't know. That's true. I don't know I can, physics, man. I can almost man. see the whole thing from this planet. So beacons allow you to mark a location. So beacons are actually Ooh, cool. Yeah, it took nice. me a while to actually start using them. Mm-hmm. Um, but what you do is you drop a beacon somewhere, and in your UI, you will always be able to see it, and you can yeah. see how far away it is from you. Good. Um, I don't think there's really any point in using a beacon until later. I mean, yeah, I that makes sense. I mean, like ah. maybe you could throw the beacon in there, but I don't mm, think that see. really. Would what be do useful. we have? Where's my pipe? There's my pipe. <laughs> it's uh, it's not quite the the right thing to do. Interesting particle effect. <laughs> I think you just have to find an alternative, like a saw. No, I think you need to find a different way in. No, but I want to go in there. There's some kind of objective screen, I think. I want it now. No, I think you have the means of looking at it. I don't remember. Oh, that's the share it. button. I want to press that. Mm. Uh, I think it's center. Nope. Yeah. I don't um, know. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. Dehydration imminent. Oh, you gotta oh. drink some water. I feel like you ran out of. You're, so, yeah, yeah. Now you have 81 ounces of fluid in you. But you get to keep the container. So that means if you find a fresh water source, Sweet. which is not the ocean. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe you could. This could be fresh water ocean. It's possible. I don't think it is. No, nah, it's not. It'll give you the prompt of, like, combine the water bottle with this thing. Hmm. So what are your thoughts so far? These controls are very clunky. In in what way? It it's very slow and like jumpy and like I, it's it, it's just hard to do things. Things are very slow. Mm. Do you think that that's like? Do you think that was an intentional choice? Or do you think that's just like a side effect of poorly implemented controls I think or it's player a side characters? Effect of inv- Fully implemented controls. Feels like it. I, I, it just feels I, off. I mean, I half agree. I think when I played a little bit of this, I thought it was interesting that the controls weren't super fluid. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Because in a, in a way, it like, it doesn't really hamper gameplay. Um, I think the fact that things kind of felt a little arduous in how you control things like okay, added this, a bit to this the This acceleration the, like, to me moving forward. Oh, mm -hmm. my goodness. Oh, we're definitely going that way. Um, I don't. I, I hate the acceleration going forward. Just because it's a it's bit slow. It's so slow. It's just like, uh, all right. I mean, that's fair. I, I guess maybe the point is to, that like traveling takes time, and so that puts a lot of value on making sure that you have the right resources. Because it, since things just, you consume, burn calories, consume water over time, mm -hmm. it means that you have to plan carefully. So if it was too fast or too easy, then maybe that would mean that the game itself would be too easy. And, and the counterbalance would be to just have you consume calories and water that much faster. And that might have just been too frustrating. Gotcha. Um, so I, I don't know. I think that it was part of the balance choice mm -hmm. choices for the game. But I do agree. It, it did kind of feel cumbersome, yeah. all things considered. I guess the other counterbalance to that would just be to make a bigger game space. Um, but Jump, the jumping feels great, though. Uh, actually, I think the jumping oh. is what I took Whoa. the most issue Hello. with. Which, oh, boy. <laughs> which may have been intentional because it's kind of easy to get to zones that you probably shouldn't go to with the jumping. Ah. Um, I, I got to certain areas where I could, like, sort of climb mountains because they give you these, like, hexagonal pillars. These are totally steps. Well, yeah, you can kind of jump up a lot of them, even though most of the level design doesn't want you to. Like, mm -hmm. I, I found a way to climb up a mountain that I shouldn't have been able to. Right. And there was just nothing up there. Gotcha. Uh, and so that, to me, like, told me that I, I wasn't playing by the game's rules oh. because they didn't populate any content up there. Right. Um, so it, it led me to wonder why they even had these hexagonal pillars mm -hmm. because they are so jumpable or yeah. so climbable. This one you might know, be, this might be intentional. This one though, I don't know, man. Maybe not. No, it's I not. don't think so. I mean, it gives you a good uh, means of like getting a scope of the land, yeah, which oh that in it itself is valuable. Actually, you're right. These planets might be really small. These ones. I mean, even then, if the moon comes really close to Earth, it screws up our oceans. Yes. Yeah. So. I don't oh. know how that works. Oh yeah. Oh boy. There's a uh, there's fall damage. Oh yeah, that's how you recover health. You just sleep. Ooh. Okay, this. I didn't find this. This is some fancy glass though. So this is a relic of life. It increases your maximum health by twenty five points. Nice. Um, and this is a mechanic that you'll see throughout. And heals me. Did it? Oh, it did heal you. Wow, that's kind of nice actually. Convenient. You are a champion of people, Eddie. <laughs> Ding, hey, ding, 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 ding. If there's pots here, I'm going to hit them. <laughs> okay, well, we should call uh, this episode here. We're yes. over time. Oh, um, really? But we're at least going to do a few episodes of this yeah. game and kind of poke and prod oh. things until we oh. feel like we've seen <laughs> a good bit. <laughs> yes, and I swear I will not drown myself ever. <laughs> um, so question of the day for this first episode. Uh, what, are you, what, what are they doing to kind of teach the player the rules of the game? I think for a survival game, it's really important to uh, make that clear to the player from the very beginning, because otherwise it just feels really unfair. Um, because survival games inherently are are maybe, I, I want to say punishing, but maybe that's not the right word. Um, but it's easy to fail mm -hmm. survival games, because mm -hmm. you just die. You die easy. That's the whole point. If yeah. you don't die easy, then it's not survival. Uh, that's true, yeah. <laughs> then it's just adventure exploration. Um, I mean, that's Ugh. maybe just my opinion, but... No, I mean, that's... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, fall damage oh, boy. is I feel like that would be even worse if I went into my into the water with a hole in my glass. That would be even worse, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Except it kind of just disappears. Maybe it's auto-healing glass. Very awesome glass. <laughs> it's very, very future. Well, thank you for watching, everyone. Stay tuned for the next episode. And in the meantime, check out the Solus Project. It's, it's kind of cool. I am 99% water right now. Wait, where is it? Where'd it go? There it is. 99% water. 100% water. I am 100% water. Bye, everyone. Bye.